Hello, everyone. My name is Cal. Right in front of me on my screen is Daniel. Welcome back to 90 Minutes of Shenanigans, take two, part two, because we were recording... A little bit of an error last time. Yeah, we were recording this episode about five, ten minutes into the episode. This uh, my, my left eye just decided to have a bit of an allergic reaction to the he air he here. In, to hack the Spanish heat, yes. In Seville, yeah. And uh, so I have this tissue with cold water just to, you know, make sure it doesn't blow up. But anyway, we have to keep persevering. So, guys. He's going to hustle. He's going to hustle yeah, it out guys, with respect. So, so, don't worry if you see my face just, you know, disintegrate. Don't be worrying about that. Uh, so, today, we're going to be talking about the Champions League from last night and Tuesday as well. And also, we're going to be previewing Premier League, the Premier League games to come. And then, if we have time, hopefully we do, we might delve upon some of the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, stuff that's come out, his interview that came out, he got some juicy, juicy bits yes. uh, said in the interview, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's revealed a lot about United, I feel, so yeah, will we get started in there, so we'll, Daniel, I think we should talk about first uh, Bayern versus United, I think, that's probably the, the big game. Yeah, let's start with a. Uh, well, let's start game. with the juicy stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, the biggest game it is uh, of the week. Um, so yeah, uh, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a very interesting game. Um, I do think that the scoreline flattered United. Um, I thought Bayern were good value for the win. I thought that you know they were the uh, much better side uh, in the overall context of the game uh, they played better football um, thought they looked a little bit more organised they weren't the best defensively either but you know even with the goals they conceded I think every time they went forward they looked like scoring uh, it doesn't help when your goalkeeper decides to lather his gloves with butter before the game starts <laughs> but uh, the less said of that uh, the better uh, but no uh, just in general uh, I thought um, I thought the first 20 minutes um, United were good uh, I thought they could have easily gone ahead within those first 20 minutes um, but then again, after that, and you may attest to this, but from what I have known of watching United, is that after the first 20, 25 minutes of matches, they always seem to have a drop off, or uh, especially when they when they go a goal down. We saw it last night as well. As soon as they went to goal down, very quickly after it was two, um, I know they got back into the game uh, through Hoyland, but, um, you know, uh, Bayern were very comfortable. I thought, uh, obviously, that late flurry of goals from Casemiro in the end kind of put a bit more respect on the scoreline. But again, I thought it was a very average or poor performance from United. I thought a lot of players went missing in that game. I thought Rashford was very poor. I'll get into uh, my kind of thoughts on him in a second. I thought he was very poor. Uh, I I know uh, Hoyland scored, but I thought he looked very isolated. Um, the back four was very poor. I thought... Um, Sergio Reguilón had good moments, but overall, I thought Leroy Sané had him pretty much every time. There was a one-on-one situation. Um, obviously, Anana had a bit of a stinker as well, but I just thought the overall performance of United was very poor. Um, obviously, Bayern uh, played well, but I mean, if you score three goals away at Bayern Munich and still come away with a defeat, you know it it isn't it isn't a good reflection. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think the positive is we did score three goals. We did score like when does United score three goals away against Bayern? Like that I couldn't have I wouldn't have written that to be honest. But yeah, I take your point. Uh even me told you <clears throat> Onana was terrible. Like you said, Onana I'm a bit worried. I know it's only a few games into the season. But I didn't want and and I'll admit this, I didn't want the hair to go. I was kind of in the pro the hair camp, you know. Uh, yeah, I and don't get me wrong. It's... Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Onana, you know, he has a he came in because he's a baller. He can play football. But at the moment, it's kind of like you replace De Gea with an outfielder, an outfield player. Like that's what it seems like. Well, I also you also have to think that when De Gea came into United as well, he struggled. Yeah, true. But but De Gea was twenty. What was it, 2012? Um, he struggled. Um, you know, he was making mistake after mistake. I, I, I just think it's about adjusting. 
to the league, the demands of the league. I know he's a ball playing goalkeeper, and that's what Ten, um, Ten Hag wants. But it's going to take him time to get used to the speed because you know it's very easy to be a ball playing goalkeeper when you're playing in whether what was he in the Serie A or Bundesliga or even La Liga because the press from the front from the opposition isn't that you know they the the front three of those teams are not going to be hounding the goalkeeper every time he gets the ball. You saw the game. Uh, against Brighton at the weekend just the minute that uh, Onana and any of the back four got the ball you know you know, uh, sorry uh, Brighton's front three was on them like that it was the same last night as well with uh, the likes of Kane Nabry and Sané so it's just going to take him a little bit of time uh, to, to kind of get used to the way Ten Hag kind of wants him to play um, and, and just to get yeah, up to speed but, with you know obviously the new like, climate and everything but he was poor the yesterday first goal Butterfingers the first goal oh uh, no you can't excuse that one. That that was horrific. Yeah, like, look, don't get me wrong. Like, as I take your point, he has to get used to things and all. But like, he was in the Champions League final. Like, as in, this is the Champions League. You've played these types of teams. I don't know. Say what you want about the Premier League, okay? But like, as in, this Champions League, this is his bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, obviously, he's he's experienced in the competition. You know, he played in it with, uh, with Ajax as well obviously being in the final last year, but, you know, the pressure is different compared to United and Inter. Even Ajax. I know Ajax are kind of one of the right. stable clubs yeah. that you'd consider as a big club. So, he's only played, and, and I, I'm, you know, I feel like I'm the one defending United and not you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, you know, he he is a good goalkeeper. We've seen that with Ajax. We've seen it with Inter. Uh, it's just about getting used to what it means to players that do play for United, of what it means to put that jersey on, and he he will get there eventually. Um, I mean, I hope he doesn't. I don't couldn't care less if he does or not. But I mean, for United fans, I'm sure you know they they'll have yeah. to, they'll have those same thoughts. But um, nah, he he was very poor last night, and even you know for um for other the other goal, I think um, Matthias Tell goal. You know, I I know he I know he took it well, but it was. It was right in front of him, you know, he, he could have saved that. Uh, there was another couple of times where, you know, he did pull off a few good saves and he was commanding in his box a few times. But, you know, any goalkeeper that concedes four goals, I don't care who it's against and makes yeah. a howler like he did, you know, it's uh, it, it doesn't look good. Yeah, ex- yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And like you said, they started well. They, 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 do, have, they do have a tendency to start well, but um, I didn't like how their heads... Just it's the drop-off. The it's a common theme it's, with United. It, it is, it is. It, I think it's a lack of character, man. I think, I think, as I said in the last podcast, I think, I think that um, this, this day and age, I don't know. I think the players are different. I don't know what it is. I just think the players that we have are much different in terms of that, that discipline, that character, that determination. We don't have it, and we look. I'm not going to get into a whole Manchester United you know, round now, but like, as in, we've had this problem for. The guts of ten years. Every single manager. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe you could argue Mourinho in the first season or two, but like every single manager, there's that determination just hasn't been there. It just hasn't been, but hasn't been there. And I just, I just, I wasn't going into this game thinking you know they're going to win. I actually was like, oh no, Bayern Munich away, like, a, like we're going to lose. The fact that we scored three goals and it was a one goal difference. At the end, what is great and all, but we're, I don't know. I feel like we got off. We got off very lucky. We got off scot free there. Oh, you did. That four three score line was, you know, flattering for United. It could have easily been, you know, and you have to think that two of those three goals came in the last. Yeah. What was it? I did five minutes of added time, and then yeah. the first um, of those was in the eighty eight minute, and Bayern were what. That they were three one up and then four two up at those stages, so they were almost kind of like they knew they had the job done. And even when uh, Casemiro scored the uh, he scored the third goal, like it was it was in the it was in the last minute or it was gone past the last minute in at a time. So it was no like it didn't really mean anything. It was purely a yeah. consolation. Um, but I want to have a little discussion about Marcus Rashford, right? I feel yeah. we need to we we need to talk about Marcus player. Rashford. Um, he has his moments. He does have his moments. I I give it I give it to him. Last year he was very good. Um, 
well, after the World Cup, he was he was on fire. No one can argue that he was probably uh, the most informed player in the world around that time uh, after the World Cup. But for me personally, I think he's one of the most overrated footballers that you know probably United have had, and certainly in the Premier League at the moment. Um, he's been at United for or like in the first team at United for about seven years now. He broke it kind of into the first team, or I think it was in 2016. It was under Van Hal when he kind of introduced him in that Europa League game against the uh, Michelin. I think it was when he scored twice. Um, yes, he's been in the. That. He's been in the. Fr- I don't know, yeah, uh, down there for dancing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's been in the in the first team, kind of fold for seven years now, and you know he's he's kind of been the focal point, and he's kind of been the kind of face of Manchester United. Obviously, coming through the academy and everything, and he's only recently signed a new contract. He's on, I think, similar enough money to Jaden Sancho. I think he just, might be just a little bit, little bit under, but obviously, you know what what he earns. I'm not going to use that as a stick to beat him with. Yeah. Um. I just think his performances are way too inconsistent. I think they have been for years. He has moments where he looks like a world beater like last season for example but then other times like last night he just goes missing and he kind of puts his head down he doesn't track back I know he's a forward and that's not his his role but every time he gets the ball all he wants to do is just take players on and shoot which is you know he is a winger that's what you want to do but he can't seem to pick a pass for his for his teammates Um, he seems to take the wrong option you know when the easier option or the better option is right there in front of him and he just, he, I just think he gives the ball away too much as well. Um, yeah. So just for me, I think he's really, really overrated. And I've heard uh, a couple, um, not all United fans, saying that he's undroppable. And I think, well, he has to be uh, dro- uh, droppable. Like, uh, you may use the argument that we don't have any options in terms of the wings, obviously, what, what's happening with, with Anthony. And then, obviously, the situation with Greenwood. And then, um, obviously, Sancho as well. So... I can understand that point that he's, you know, he's he's undroppable. But they're only saying he's undroppable because there's no other option. You know, if those players were, or if United had, had more options in those, um, in the in the wing positions, specifically the left wing, I don't think he'd be playing, or I don't think he deserves to be playing, especially not the way he started this season. Yeah, I tend to agree. I tend like I I I am actually I'm pro Rashford in the sense of I think we should play him. But I think the issue that we have is you know, remains the same with Hoyland, but we don't have anyone else really going forward to, to, to yeah, add. Yeah, that's the point, I think. To him. And, you know, Sancho, we've talked about Sancho. Sancho isn't this. You can't expect Fernandez to be pumping out goals, you know, as well. And, you know, when Martial's on it, he's, he looks great, but God, what to be a... fair to him, I know, I know Martial has gone a lot of stick and you know, obviously, rightly so. He's injured all the time, and even when he does play, he's just, he looks terrible. But when he came on, yeah. But when he came on yesterday, he did look very lively. I thought he he kind of gave United a little extra something because when he came on, it kind of flipped the switch in the game a little bit. I thought United kind of grew into a little bit more when he came on. So I will give Martial credit for that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what what needs to be done. I feel like every podcast we're gonna do is gonna be like. How does Man United like get back to where they were? But like, is in uh, hopefully never. <laughs> well, Chelsea aren't exactly, you know. Um, uh, early days, early yeah, days. I know, and you did win the Champions League like what, like two seasons ago? So two years. Um, yeah. So yeah, I get, I get, like with Rashford, I think I, I, I would, I would continue playing him because I, uh, I know you, you were saying not to use the argument, but we don't have any other options really at the moment. Because a lot of the players yeah. that we have are very unreliable. I think they're very... Again, it remains to be seen with Hoyland, but Martial, you can't rely on Sancho. Sure, Sancho's gone. Garnacho's good. Garnacho's good, but I think he's a super sub. I think Garnacho's a super sub. Um, I still think it's, you know, Garnacho's only 18 years of age. It's very yeah. hard. It's, it's, it's very hard and kind of almost... Not to say unfair, but to kind of rest all your kind of hopes of, you know, having options within that kind of front line to 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 have Garnacho and kind of let Garnacho be that kind of not so much focal point, but you know, hoping that he'll come in and you know, bang in the goals and the assists yeah. when he's still only eighteen and as much of a talent as he is, you know, 
it's going to take him time. He can't be, you know, especially at a club like United, for him to come in and then to be expected to go, OK, well, if Rashford's not playing well, we need you to step up. And then if he doesn't, then the blame or the criticism will be laid on his shoulders. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Will we move on? Yes. So, yeah. oh, do we want to... Uh, we talk oh. about the a little bit of the Solskjaer interview and then we can go uh, to wrap it up. Oh, the, pro- yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, it's probably best. So I think you read it. Yeah, I um I had a read of it. Uh, it was quite um again similar to the United's performance yesterday. It was quite interesting. Um, I thought a couple of the points that he made were, I also I didn't think he really need to say. I don't really get the point of saying all this, like all the stuff about all oh, these players that we could have signed or we could have got Haaland a couple of years ago. Or, yeah. you know, could've could have got should've. Rice and this and that, and it's like. Well, if anything, Haaland they probably at that could time. have. Been. If anything, like, is in. But this was a. I think he said Haaland before, before, uh, before um, Salisbury, wasn't it? Before he moved. So you know, you would have got him. Yeah, it, it was when he was at Salzburg, I think. Well, you would have got him relatively on the cheap, I would imagine. But I, I think, yeah, I think that's. I did his think value that's and his kind of, his value and his market value and his kind of his his stock at that time, you know. And there was no guarantee that even if he came to United that he'd even be starting. You know, he's at City now because of how good he was mm. when he was at Salzburg and when he was at Dortmund. And sure, <laughs> look at the price that City paid for him, just over mm. 50 million. And I mean, <laughs> just over 50 million for Haaland with the way he's been performing yeah. is steal. Uh, what did the Declan you... Rice thing. Yeah, yeah. The Declan Rice thing, I mean, I think you mentioned Moises Caicedo as well. It's like, well, Brighton paid 4.5 million for Caicedo. And we got him for 115 million. But again, it's like, I feel it's very easy for managers when they come out and do these interviews to go like, oh, well, I had these ideas for this and I, I didn't get this. It's always what they don't get is the reason why they don't succeed and not that they were in the job and they had the opportunity to do well. And he didn't, you know, he was in a Europa League final, one that realistically United should have beaten Villarreal in that Europa League final on paper and just with the players that they had United should have won that um should have won that final. Uh, I remember United were in a couple of FA Cup semi finals. But I remember when we uh when Chelsea played United in the FA Cup semi final, uh we won three two. United have had opportunities and Solskjaer had plenty of chances to, you know, do a job there. And I know a lot I know a few I don't want to say a lot of few United fans will argue that oh well he did do a decent job. He got us to finish second a couple of times. He was challenging and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. He how wasn't playing a style of football that was you know united. It didn't a lot of counter attacking football and then and yeah, then when I, when I he tried when actually. he tried to press kind of Sir Alex Stoyley, it imploded. Like, do you, I, I, I don't know if you remember that. Um, you remember the game against uh against Liverpool? I think it was in the twenty twenty one yeah, twenty two yeah, season yeah. or something like that. When the when they won five nil, um, United just it was like the minute or that they had a plan to basically just sit back for the entire game and just kind of catch Liverpool on the break. And then within about, I, I think it was like three minutes of that game, bang, Liverpool go 1-0 up. And then the whole game plans out the window. And then with the way United were playing, I think when you're a manager at a club like United, you need to go, I'm the new sheriff in town. This is my way of doing it. And the players need to respect that. And the players need to understand that he's the manager. This is the club you're playing for. I felt like under Solskjaer, you know, you, you could argue it's the same case now especially this season under Ten Hag and then with previous managers before. But I just don't think Solskjaer ever really had the chops I to think, be a United manager. I think one of his answers in the interview kind of was a big tell of the fact that it, that, that showed that he didn't really have the team under control. And it was when when one when he was saying about um, about offering who like asking who wanted to be captain. And, and no one wanted to, to take yeah. it. And then also, yeah. And then also, what was it? Um, oh, it's gone in my head now. Um, just like as in a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of the players were like they 
they were very self Thought they were better than they were. Yeah. Yeah. They were very, yeah, thought they were better than they were. Very self oriented And there was no, there was no camaraderie. There was no big picture in the club. They were all very fragile. Yeah. And I just, it just, it, from what, when I was reading that, it just didn't seem, it didn't seem like he had the team ever under control. Ever under control, you know? And as a result, no. a lot of the players were acting the maggot. A lot of the players were, were hitting out. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that point you make about, or the point that he made in the interview about when he asked, you know, certain senior players, now he didn't name names, uh, which I think he should. I mean, if you're going to do an interview and expose or spill the beans as much as he did, <laughs> go the whole hog. Like, don't just, you know, yeah. <laughs> play the diplomat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, going back to the point, it was like, yeah, when he had uh, had offered a couple of the senior players the chance to, um, to be captain and everyone was like, uh, yeah, uh, no thanks, I'm good. It's like, it was like you were saying, that shows he has absolutely no authority and nobody wants to, yeah, I want to be the captain for you and for Manchester United. I'll, you know, leave that pitch in a coffin if I have to. You know, you go back to your, you know, when Sir Alex was in charge of United or even when Mourinho was in charge of Chelsea. You had Terry as the captain for uh, for Chelsea. You had, uh, would it be Rio or um, whoever it was? I think, I think it was Rio for or Vidic. Uh, who was captain for United at that time? Is like they would have left their, you know, they would have left blood, sweat, and tears on that pitch yeah. to be captain for that club. And it's like he made the point that, again that we made that the players had a, you know, a better perception of themselves than than what they actually were. And it ties into the point I think when we mentioned about the match yesterday and just the couple of the United matches, you know, certainly this season and past that when they go a goal down, it's that weak mind and it's the fragility that they have that is kind of it seems to be deep rooted within the club and I I wouldn't even just go as you know I wouldn't even just say United I probably go as far to say it's in a lot of football clubs and it seems to be just kind of deep rooted within the game nowadays. What are the football clubs just out of curiosity? Do you think? Look at Chelsea. Uh, you know, he could he could go off and do that interview saying how much he loved into Milan and everything when he was contracted to Chelsea, who paid a lot of money to get him. The way that it was handled, you know, we were doing everything we could to get rid of it on what was he on like three hundred and uh, something odd grand a week on a still having like three or four years left on a contract. And how that, you know, caused issues. Um, I heard that a lot of the players, especially last year, didn't want to be there. And they kind of just threw in the towel, which I think I think Ollie kind of mentioned a similar point in the interview as well. That a lot of the players didn't want to play or didn't want to put the effort in because they knew they didn't want to be there. So, you know, I could link it to Chelsea as well. But there's a couple yeah. of other, um, I'm sure there's a couple of other instances I could think of. Um, I mean, what it doesn't have to be necessarily now, but. Certainly, over the last number of years, they definitely sure. Sure, look at Arsenal as well over the last few years before, obviously, uh, this season and last. Look at the turmoil they were in with Emery and everything going on, and Shaka getting booed off by the fans yeah. and everything. Is so it, it does happen around. It does happen. I think. I think. I think you know it. I think Arsenal have done. See Arsenal. I don't know what Arsenal have done better than you know it. I can't. Well, obviously, have Mikel Mikel Arteta, but like. When did when did Wenger go? When did Wenger go? How many years ago? He left in he left in twenty twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. So it's taken them five years to kind of recoup, and they've actually kind of surpassed where they were. Second place, you know, last season. Now we'll see how it goes this season. You know, it's taken them ten years. I know they finished second place and they've won trophies. Arsenal haven't, but I don't know. There definitely seems to be something. Well, there's, there's there's more there's more force in Arsenal. There's more there's more unity. You know, you just don't seem to. I, I think it's getting there. I think I think people saying oh Eric ten Hag out blah blah blah. As as Ragnick said, the club needs open heart surgery, and I know it's been ten years. You know, they've been doing open heart surgery for ages, obviously. But like, I think I think I think any of, a lot of the players that are still remaining from the Solskjaer, the Mourinho days. They need to be, apart from a few, need to be slowly bedded out, you know? 
Yeah, I think if, if you want to use the comparison between Arsenal and United, the Arsenal players, the majority of them, if not all of them, want to play for Arsenal. I don't get that same feeling with United even now. Yeah. I think there's a couple of players there that probably don't want to be. Obviously, Jaden Sancho is the best example. And then you look at what's going on with Anthony and then the whole Greenwood situation. You don't see that at Arsenal. I know they had their issues in the past with uh, Stan Kroenke and um, th- their ownership issues. But what Arteta has come in and done is... See, a lot of the players have kind of played with each other the whole time. Your Sackers, your Martinelli's, your... Um, who else can we talk? Um, even Ramsdale and stuff like that. They've all been yeah. there and they've kind of grown together. I feel like United are always trying to, okay, we need to improve. We need to get this player in. We need to pay such and such for this player. We need to try and put the pieces together. But without actually creating a kind of team ethic, I think that's the difference between yeah. between Arsenal and United think- at the moment. But in saying that, Arsenal haven't won anything yet. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was what I said. But also, I think Eric Ten Hag also, I'm, I'm wondering now, was has it been a good idea, or was it a good decision? Sorry, from Ayrton Hag to sign the majority of players from Ajax, or you know, having worked with them at Ajax, because yeah, it's good because you're bringing in players that you trust, and you know, will will respect you and follow orders and all that. But it's also it's a different culture they're bringing. It just it seems a bit all over the place as well, like a lot, like it's just. Players from different years, but then also they had the Ajax players. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and I think, you know, obviously if we're going to go back to the um, uh, to the Solskjaer interview, it's like oh, yes, you sir. can still see the same problems at United, certainly this season. I mean, yeah, I know United fans like say, oh, yeah, we did have a good season last year, you know, finishing, finishing third, uh, winning, the, winning the League Cup. Uh, getting back into Champions League. So, I mean, yeah, you know, it was good at the time. But um, that isn't what United want to do. United need to be challenging for yeah. league titles and Champions League, you know. But, yeah, no, the whole, to be honest, the whole Solskjaer interview was, you know, I could see where he was coming from at certain points about, um, s- certainly about the players and how they um had to perceive themselves. I think that's still an issue. Um in terms of um, signing the players that, you know, he said he wanted and we didn't get because the club were only, um, were only kind of bringing in three marquee signings. It's like, oh. yeah, it's all, you know, should have, could have, would have. It's like, you know, th- there was no guarantee that, yeah, it's very easy to say, oh, well, we could have got Haaland and we could have got Caicedo or we could have got Rice and, you know, whoever. Uh, I, I think he mentioned Bellingham as well. Yeah. It's like, the, the, there's no guarantee that, you know, Bellingham would have turned out to be the player he is and smashing it at, at Real Madrid or, or the way Haaland uh, did at Dor- uh, Dortmund and now obviously City. I'd say with Rice, but, you know, yeah, it was... Um, and, he made a couple um, of good points in the interview, but overall, yeah, it was a bit, a bit strange, Daniel, in my opinion. What did you think of, lastly, what did you think of the what he was saying about Ronaldo having, like, feeling like he had to sign him? Yeah, well, look, I mean, obviously the whole, like... It felt like a vanity signing, in my opinion. Like that at the time, like l- looking at it. Kind I think of, it was you know, more just because Man City were about to sign. Well, yeah, you could also say that as well. Um, I, I think that's probably what he's saying. He felt like I have to sign it because you know, yeah. I think United fans and just the whole you know club itself. You know, if a player who you know basically made a name for himself and you know won won a Ballon d'Or and helped United win leagues and. Champions League um, to then go you know a couple of years later uh, to go to you know their nearest uh, their nearest rival it would not look good and you know he would have you know he would have got a, <laughs> a bit of stick when he came back to Old Trafford yeah. but yeah I mean like I don't think United really did the you know proper uh, not to say scout you don't need to scout Ronaldo but like to actually see if he would fit into this team and how they could get the best out of him yeah. Which, you know, he, like he did well, you know, especially in that first season. He came back, you know, I think he scored like 24 goals in all competitions. Um, So obviously he did well, but, you know. Seventh place, wasn't it? Seventh place finish, though. 
Uh, was it seven or six or so? I, I don't know. Didn't but uh, yeah, no, it, 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 yeah, to me, it just felt like a vanity signing. Um, I don't think there was any, you know, reason for United to really go after Ronaldo because, like, I know he's Ronaldo and he's one of the best to, to ever do it in the game. But, you know, you have to realise that he was, what was he, 36 at the time, 35? Uh, yeah, he, came in. he must have been yeah. around 36 or something, yeah, because he was you 37 know. or something. Or he yeah, and he made the same point about Sancho as well. It's like, oh, it, it looked great with Sancho. It's like, on the one hand, he's bringing in someone who's in their late 30s, obviously one of the best to do it, and then yeah. another one who was what 20, 21 at the time or something like that. Um, probably even a bit younger, I think he might have been 19 or something. So it, it just kind of shows that United, um, I know probably Solskjaer had a little bit of a say, especially in probably the Sancho and definitely the Ronaldo one as well, that, yes, yeah, there's just always these differences about United aren't just, they're not buying the players that they really need. Um, you look at, obviously, uh, across Manchester, what City do, you know, people always ridicule them for just, you know, splashing the cash and everyone, but City buy players that they know will either fit straight into the team or just give them incredible squad depth. And then when they come in, it's as if they've been playing, you know, regularly all the time. And you just yeah. don't get that with United. And that whole, yeah, the whole Cristiano Ronaldo signing was it was just a vanity signing. And as you said, they probably just did it to stop City getting them. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, it was a good interview. And it definitely re- revealed a lot of juicy things coming out of United. And definitely feels... I feel... I feel kind of long for Ole a bit you know as in I really? kind of miss him I miss him yeah it kind of at the moment it kind of feels like oh you know there were some good times under Ole but look was there like what well you know finishing second and stuff and we did no but we, it was good it was like counter attacking football they were scoring goals but I know I know I know I just I don't know it, 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 maybe he's just a nice guy I don't know I think you're just sentimental about the fact that yeah. he played for United as well. and the, He did, the he did get some time. good results, though. He did get some good results, though. Like, no, he, he had good results, you know. Th- th- there that's was what good I mean. Times, like, but I mean, but ultimately, he, he didn't win anything. And he was there yeah. for, what was he there? He had the interim spell in 2019. And then he, he got the job for, what, another two years? So he was there for, like, what, nearly two and a half, three years. And the closest United ever got to uh, winning something was that Europa League final, which they lost. Yeah, you can argue United finished second, but City were streets ahead <laughs> in every one of those. So yeah, it wasn't like, sure. oh, they finished second and we were in a title race and we, we missed yeah. out by a goal or like a point or the, the last day. So to be honest, like it was like I said earlier on, I never thought Ollie had the chops to be a United manager. Um it's the same thing. I, I remember that whole debate about Lampard and Solskjaer. They're just, you know, that it, it was the kind of, it was the novelty of the fact that they're legends at the clubs. But yeah, it was an interesting interview. Uh, to be honest, I, I didn't really see the point in, like, in most of it. I mean, two years after you're sacked and you, you're given all this about, oh, we could have got yeah. this and if we had done this, we would have done that. It's just, yeah, all right, okay. So, you know, so, you know, before we move on quickly to the preview, there's, the, there's been rumblings of him uh, for the Ireland job. Solskjaer? Yeah. Oh, my God. What, what did you think of that? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear that. Where did you hear that? Just just on, on the web. Just on the web. No, let's just not go there. Let's not. No. Right. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to Ireland? No. Let's not quickly discuss uh, some of the games. Daniel, will we tackle Chelsea for the Premier League this weekend? Playing yeah, so Villa we're game. um yeah, Villa at home on Sunday at two o'clock. Uh, look, Ooh, I'm gonna be completely Villa, honest. Uh, yeah, I've no hope. Absolutely no hope. Because you guys beat I, I think... Bur- 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 Bournemouth, didn't you? You know the answer to that question. You don't need me to tell you. Um yeah, we did, yeah. Uh, so uh, we yeah, lost the game the on it. <laughs> yeah, it was a draw. Um which is good for us, a good point on the road, considering we've won about yeah. six games all of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Villa at home on Sunday. Uh, <clears throat> look, uh, if I'm going to speak kind of logically and, you know, be real about it, um, I've no kind of expectations, I hope. Um, I'd be happy with the point. Um, we just, 
I don't get excited for the get. I was really excited going into the season uh, with you know Poch coming in with the you know the players that we did have, uh, especially in pre season because we looked really good in pre season. But we had a we we're playing fourth back. We were playing good free flowing football, scoring goals. I know it's pre season, but you know that that's all you can build up or build on. Um, what you call it uh, for the season. Um, and then start of the season, it's really gone off the back four. He's playing a back four. Um, he's playing, you know, the same team all the time. Um, and just yeah, completely missed from something. He'd be the next uh, dropper. Uh, you know, um, but at the game, um, I'd be happy. Uh. Like the injury list, I know it's the same with United. It's just yeah. Of, um, I don't even know at this rate, to be honest. Uh, we should be called they are a very good team. Um, you know, Emery's a good manager. Um, they have uh, they have a very good record. You know, I think they had the second most points in all of twenty twenty three. So it's going to be a tricky game. And to be honest, I mean, if we get a point, I'd probably take it. But fingers crossed that we can we can we can pull it out the hat and, and win. I don't think you will, but that's that's not here, not there. No, I don't either. I don't either. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know you're playing Burnley away. I think this is a good game to have. I know it's away, so it's a bit harder. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Fortress in the fortress. Uh, but turf more. Turf more, yeah. But I think it's a game like Burnley haven't really done much this season at all. I think I think I like I, I actually kind of respect Burnley because um, a company hasn't really changed the way he plays and he's kind of going for it, but it's it's not really working for him. But I like that they're 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 trying it's to totally different. It's totally different trying to play attack and football in the championship. But I I, I, I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. and I hope hopefully apart from uh, against United there, I hope they they they, they do well. Do you know. Um, <laughs> But I think I think this is a good game for United because we need points. I think we we've only won two games out of the five we've played. We've lost three games. Like, yeah, it's tough. I think yeah, I think this is a good game to have because it's just three points. Give me three. Well, give me three points. I don't know, but it's three points. I can get us a bit higher on the, on the three table. points. Take them. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think I, I think we're in, we're we you know aren't getting any breaks at the moment. We can't catch a break. And I think this is the break. I think this no, they is... just can't play well and catch a break and catch a break. There's, some, there's been some bad decisions given towards the United. Soft penalties. Oh, well, actually, no. no. As no. I'm saying this, as I'm saying this, I'm like, it's going so well. As I'm saying this, I'm realizing, oh wait, Wolves' first game. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, but uh, anyway, that's uh, that's been the podcast for today. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, every podcast, we're going to try and improve a bit more, improve a bit more the quality and everything. So, please bear with us. Process, uh, guys. It's a process. I've been Cal. That has been Daniel. I've been Daniel. I just, I just said you now, and uh, I suppose we'll see you in the next one.